Hi there. In the last video, we added a destroy controller action. And one of the things that this controller action does is raises an exception if destroy fails. Now, currently, that exception does not get handled. So, in this video, I wanted to talk about exception handling and how we can uh, rescue exceptions and uh, serve that back to the client. I'm assuming you're already familiar with exceptions in Ruby. Basically, an exception gets raised when something unexpected happens in the code, something that you haven't written logic to handle. So for example, maybe a third party API is down and you haven't written logic to handle that. In our case, we're going to get an exception if the destroy fails for some reason. So perhaps Rails can't talk to our database. The specific exception that gets raised by destroy bang is called record not destroyed. And I can write a rescue block to handle this. So I'm going to wrap the whole or all of the logic in the controller in a rescue block. I'm going to rescue active record record not destroyed and inside the block I'm just going to render uh, let's just say for now JSON an empty JSON object and the status of unprocessable entity so this is a bit nicer than than what we had before now, if destroy bang fails, instead of that letting that bubble up and just having Rails uh, render an error, we're actually going to capture the error and then raise a um, a response back to the user with a specific status code telling them that the request they formed was correct. Um, but in this case, we weren't able to perform the operation. Now. The code we've written works fine, but there are a few disadvantages to having this rescue block in the controller action. One is that over time, we may want to rescue from different errors and do different things depending on those errors. So, you know, we may want to have another rescue block which renders from a different type of error and you can imagine that if we end up with, say, five or six different errors that we're handling, this controller action is going to become very big when the actual controller logic itself is very small. The other drawback is we can't really share this logic with other um, actions in this controller or other actions in other controllers. And in this case, the logic is pretty generic. A record not destroyed could be raised by other active record database deletion queries. And we probably want to reuse this so that if any controller tries to do a destroy bang and it fails, we render back this uh, error and status code to the user. So, one of the ways that we can improve on this is by using uh, rescue from. So Rails has a Rails rescue from, which allows you to, so typically we, we add this at the top of the controller and we say rescue from, name the error, and then with, and the name of a method to handle that exception. So in our case, we can say rescue from and let's add our error. So active record, record not destroyed. Then we can say with and uh, let's just say uh, not destroyed. And now we can have a private method not destroyed 
which will essentially run this logic. And I can now delete this. So this is an improvement. Improvements now when any controller action inside the books controller generates a, or raises a active record, record not destroyed error. We'll call the not destroyed method, which is here, and we'll render back a unprocessable entity. We can actually go a step further and move this logic to the application controller. And the advantage there would be that any controller in our application can um, use this exception handler. And in this case, it actually makes a lot of sense because as I said, this is a generic Rails error. If we're calling destroy bang anywhere in our, in our application controllers, we probably want to serve the client a nice uh, error message. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'll open the application controller and I'm going to take this and I'll also take this I'll make this a private method paste that in there and the final thing it would be nice to instead of just rendering an empty JSON object it would be nice to actually display the error um, that actually occurred. So rescue from will actually pass an optional parameter into the met into the with method. So if I do if I, I can call this anything I like, uh, but I'll just go with E and then I can access the actual error object. So what I'm going to do is I'll say errors and I can say e dot record which for this specific active record record not destroyed allows me to access the active record object that failed the destroy bang and then I can say um, errors so this will now render a status code to the user and inside the JSON object, it will return all of the errors. That's everything for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.